say I do have a talk show in America. It's called The Real. It is really hard getting talk shows in America, y'all. They wouldn't even give us a full year. They said, we're going to give you some test episodes at first, right? And they said, we're going to put you in seven cities. I said, okay. This is four years ago. And they started the test episodes in June. But in April, the producers called me and they said, now before we do the test episodes, we're going to send you some diet shakes to see if you can lose a little weight, right? Yeah, I said, send a shake, send a shake. Those shakes go good with hamburgers, french fries, <laughs> and brown liquor. <laughs> I ain't lose no weight, and we on season five of my show, and we just won an Emmy, so do you and be you, okay? That's what you do. Because <laughs> I believe in embracing your flaws. Don't let nobody make you feel bad for something that is just naturally you. Yeah, you try to improve, but sometimes you use what you got. If you got a big nose, take side profile pictures. Just... <laughs> you be proud of yourself, okay? Now, also, what they tried to do was they wanted to actually change up this season of the show. So they decided, we're going to go live, because our show used to be pre-taped. And I said, are y'all sure y'all want us to go live? Because live meant I have to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning to prepare a show for 8 a.m. I'm a stand-up comic. I told him, look, I might be drunk. I might be hungover. I might say the wrong thing. I might cuss. I don't know if you want to go live. They said, no, it'll be OK. And then, you know what, you guys? I started changing my life. I said, I have to change my negatives to a positive. And I said, maybe I can come up with something positive out of this. If it's a live show, they can't edit out my jokes, and I can do some things that they don't want me to do, and I, can, I won't get in trouble for it. So I said, that might help me later in life, right? Now, I ended up trying to find out who I was as a person, because I had a feeling I needed to know who were my ancestors. So I ended up doing a DNA test, and I found out that I'm 10% British, right? <laughs> and not only that, I knew that I was 10% British because I love Queen Elizabeth and I believe that I am one of her cousins, right? <laughs> no, y'all can laugh if y'all want. See, she likes lime green, I like lime green. She has a purse that has no money in it. I have a purse that <laughs> had no money in it. That's my cousin, right? And once I found out I was 10% British, I said, let me go see my cousins. I went to London, and they let me in to Buckingham Palace, but I only got past the gift shop, right? <laughs> but that was okay. I was trying to explain to the guards that, hey, I have a DNA test. I'm 10% British. I'm her cousin. They said, get the hell out. So I didn't want to embarrass her. I said, but I'm going to find out about her later. Now, while that was going on, one day at my show, we ended up having um, one of my co-hosts got sick, and she couldn't come in at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. in the morning. So I told my um, producers, I said, we need to find a substitute. Well, they decided that they were going to call in Mel B, the former Spice Girls, to come in. I said, oh, my God, Mel B, this is great. She's black, I'm black, she's British, I'm 10% British, we probably cousins, too. This will be good, right? Now. While this was going on, y'all know the royal wedding was about to happen. Now, the royal wedding between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was the wedding that I wanted to be at because Meghan Markle is black, I'm black, she's from the hood, I'm from the hood, that's probably my cousin. I'm trying to get to that wedding, right? <laughs> so when I had Mel B come on the show, now, when we ever, wherever we have a guest co-host, you're supposed to stick to the questions that the producers produced, right? But because we live, I decided to go a different direction. Now you see where that comes in handy. I look at Mel B, and I said, Mel, do you know anybody that's going to the royal wedding? As I'm saying that now, whenever I'm, you know, talking to somebody, the producers have an earpiece in my ear because they're talking to me. When they saw that I went off on that question, they said, Lonnie, what are you doing? Now, the way I communicate back to them is I blink. I said, I'm going rogue. That's what I'm doing, right? <laughs> so I look at Mel B, I said, do you know anybody going to the royal wedding? I thought she was going to say no, and we were going to move on. She says, all five of us are going to the royal wedding. I said, all oh, five of y'all? She said, yes. Now, that got me to thinking, if all five Spice Girls are going to the royal wedding, they haven't been together in five or seven years, that means they're going for a reason. So I look at her, my producer in my ear, abort the next question. I'm like, bitch, I'm about to get an exclusive, right? <laughs> 
look at Mel B, I said, so does that mean that y'all gonna be performing at the reception? She looks down, she says, I've said too much. I said, I take that as a yes. And she throws her cards up in the air, and then my uh, producers are like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to the royal wedding, bitches, okay? <laughs> the show ended at 9 a.m., y'all. By 9.10, the clip of me and Mel B having that conversation went all around the world. It was in Australia, it was in Africa. Go, 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 go. It was everywhere. <laughs> But more importantly, it had to go to Kensington Palace because they needed to get a comment. So they had to go to Queen Elizabeth and tell her Mel B was on this talk show that said she was going to be performing at the royal wedding by a girl named Lonnie Love who took a DNA test and she 10% British and thinks she your cousin. Now the Queen of England know who the fuck I am. Still didn't get to the wedding though, that's the thing. But it was a beautiful wedding, I saw it on TV. Oh my goodness, it was such a mix of cultures. I loved it, okay? It was the blackest wedding the royals have ever seen and you could tell. They had the black preacher, he preached for two hours. The queen fell asleep, woke up, he was still preaching, fell asleep, she went to go have tea, he was still preaching. I'm like, queenie, that's what happens, okay? You had Oprah in the corner, she rocking and humming. You know that was black. You got a black woman rocking and humming. They picked the right woman, though, because if it was me, it would have been a Black Panther thing, you know. <laughs> I would have had the Queen of Wakanda wear everything. We would have had a Soul Train line, you know. I would have had Drake at the reception, you know. Hey! <laughs> but you know what? I have to say this. You know that Meghan Markle is black because her daddy didn't show up at the wedding. <laughs> That's my time.